Hello and welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. I'm your host, JJ, and you're tuning into the Think Bamboo podcast where we talk about bamboo. Today, our guest is uh, far away, Rafael Asconi. Hello and welcome. Hello, how's it going? Uh, very good. Very happy to have you on board, even that you have a, uh, a power uh, outage over there. But uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I heard that's how it is. I think one of the electric poles... Uh... It was an explosion, so we don't have electricity in the whole neighborhood. But uh, yeah, uh, fortunately, I have some power supply in the apartment. We have batteries, so this conversation <laughs> should do, should be good. That's the positive uh, side of 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 this, exactly. So um, Rafael is here um, because he's doing some uh, amazing stuff in Myanmar, previous previously known as Burma, um, and uh, basically focusing a lot on emergency shelters with bamboo. But um, Rafael, maybe you want to give a, a introduction yourself. Sure. Yeah. So um, I'm uh, originally I'm an architect. I, mm -hmm. I was working before in uh, Japan, Tokyo. I was working for like uh, uh, a company there that was doing mostly like uh, commercial projects, like restaurants, hotels, and stuff like that. And I've always felt like uh, my work wasn't very satisfying and uh, very useful in a way. Um, mm -hmm. So I quit the job after two years. I moved to Burma, and at that time, Burma was going under the first like uh, elections, uh, democratic elections. The whole country was kind of opening up. It was a service sense kind of like atmosphere. Everything was happening all of a sudden. The, it was developing like crazy. There was uh, amazing vibes. I mean, it, the country went through a very struggle um, political regime for for many mm -hmm. many years before. Yeah. So they're coming from like a very dark times, and then finally it was opening up to the world. So that's the context within which I arrived in Burma. And then there was a sequence of events that happened. Uh, there was first the Rohingya genocide that started in 2017, a little bit before, actually. Um, so that hit Burma quite uh, severely. Um, and then in 2021, in February, there was a military coup, and now we're in the middle of a civil war. So the context was extremely difficult to, to cope with and to um, try to start the architectural design firm. Um, and slowly, we went from designing like public spaces, working with different communities, in the city, trying to get grants to build like um, these type of installations in the city that would serve like uh, sports centers, playgrounds, and uh, stuff like that using bamboo and trying to promote bamboo. And then suddenly the military coup and then the civil war happened. And um, now we're trying to focus on low cost housing, refugee housing. So mm -hmm. we're working with communities in refugee camps. We're working with also communities in, in slums. And we're trying to innovate using bamboo to find ways to build extremely quickly. Uh, and cheaply, uh, mm -hmm. like quality housing that could serve that kind of like uh, new context. So we had to kind and of adapt our, our our working style to the mm -hmm. political Absolutely. context. And and you you mentioned earlier when we talked that there is like a loophole where lucky you bamboo is like seen as officially as a temporary material, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's really interesting coming from bamboo. It's actually not uh, the only country where there's this loophole. Uh, there's many countries, including Burma, where officially the government recognizes this construction material as being temporary. And so like the amount of regulations and administrative work you have to go through to actually go ahead and build these installations is much lesser than if you were to use other materials such as wood and concrete, for example. So Makes this sense. is a kind and of like hijack in the system where you can actually build very easily and quicker and uh, not spend too much time on the admin part of the project. And this could be like back historical to regarding the colonial masters back in time who, who didn't like understand bamboo and thought, oh, this is like temporary material or is it uh, something locally? Uh, because it's, I, I mean, it there, there yeah. always was bamboo there, right? I mean, this wasn't something that was brought by somebody. The bamboo is endemic to Asia. Yeah, true. So, like, during the colonial times, then there were the first, like, uh, official, like, really well-crafted, like, building codes that were uh, drafted at that time. And when you read the sections that are on the bamboo, bamboo at that time was also considered within the building code, like, being a, a temporary material. And that had less, uh, so they they didn't really mention too much about bamboo, but the little they do mention about it, mm -hmm. it's a very kind of loose little topic where they don't spend too much attention to like the regulation, the safety measures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of like very loosely thought of at that time as well. But it is a very like traditional, like we're not like reinventing the wheel here. 
This is a very traditional kind of construction method that people have been using for centuries, for a very, very long time. But the way so we're you using have craftsmen. It, do you have people who still know how to work with bamboo, or do you have to train them from scratch? Um, so on site? there are some residues of this um, uh, craftsmanship that still survives uh, the development and the change mm -hmm. of material. Um, and some of these, like, uh, so when you go to the countryside, actually, like most of the houses are built in bamboo. But these are not mm -hmm. like what I would say like highly like performing buildings with like very skillful workers. They're usually very quickly built uh, mm -hmm. because of the need of like building very quickly and efficiently. But when you go into cities, you realize that from time to time you do see like high highly skilled craftsmanship in bamboo. And in Burma, it's in Myanmar, it's mostly have to do with the bamboo scaffolding for renovation of Buddhist pagodas throughout the country. Mm. When they renovate Buddhist pagodas, it's the only monuments where they never ever use steel scaffolding. They still use bamboo. Uh, bamboo. And it's incredible. And it, it creates very organic shapes, unlike the, the scaffoldings you have in Hong Kong, for example, that are very like rigid and Spread. modular and vertical. In Burma, when they create the, the scaffolding, it's very round mm -hmm. shaped. And it goes mm. very well along the curvature of the pagoda. So it, it adapts to that very like organic shape. And it's very beautiful, actually, and it's temporary. Uh, but you need like highly skilled scaffolders to design and build these scaffoldings. And it was very funny mm. because I remember going to a workshop in Hong Kong at the University of Scaffolding of Hong Kong. I didn't even know that even existed. And they were doing like leading some workshops to show exactly the joints of bamboo scaffolding that they were doing in Hong Kong, which is highly engineered. Like these are like there were calculations. They, they know exactly what they're talking about. And I was wow. fascinated to learn about like the way they create these joints to build these high rises using bamboo in Hong Kong. So I did a I did a workshop and I learned a lot. And I brought a lot of like all these materials back to Myanmar. And then I went to the Shwedagon Pagoda, which is like the main pagoda uh, in the tallest pagoda in Myanmar, uh, which is in Yangon, the main pagoda. And mm -hmm. I was asking around like if I could go and meet the main scaffolder. I got his contact. I went to meet him, and I was showing him all this technology I brought back from Hong Kong, saying to him. Check this out. This is what they use to build high rises, sky rises, yeah. like in Hong Kong. Sky yeah, yeah. What, what do you think of this? Like, have you ever seen this technology before? And he's like, No, no, no. This doesn't work, man. Trust me, it, there, there, it will never work. Look <laughs> at it. What we use in Burma, the only way to make it work is using coconut rope. Oh. And I'm like, Okay, man. <laughs> like, fair enough. You have your own traditional way of doing the scaffolding, which works a hundred percent. But I'm bringing you like actual like engineered piece of like material that they use to build yeah. sky rides. Like, yes, it does work. <laughs> and he was completely <laughs> clueless of this. So it was very fun um, conversation. But, but, but this guy is a pro. I mean, he's been doing the, the renovation of the pagoda for like already like uh, 30 years. And it's every five years. So he's built like six wow. uh, scaffolding for this mega huge wow. uh, pagoda that's in Yangon. So the guy is definitely like cutting edge like scaffolder in Burma. You don't have yeah. photos um, of, of that scaffolding, organic scaffolding <laughs> technique in, in, in uh, Myanmar. Or if you yeah, have, share something. it for later. <laughs> sure, yeah? definitely, yeah. we'll do. That would They're be cool. absolutely beautiful. It's, a, it's, yeah. a, it's an art piece of itself. And the fact that it's ephemeral and temporary makes mm -hmm. it so much more even like... Uh, unique. You know, in, uh, unique yeah. and... Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. And um, uh, maybe uh, you want to share some some other images you have of some of the builds you've done lately, um, um, directly on the on the podcast, so people can better uh, visualize um, how a temporary uh, bamboo construction in in Myanmar looks, and and maybe get also inspiration. Okay, cool. I'm going to share my screen. I have a couple slides I'd like to show today. Um, that would be great. That would be great. Okay, cool. So Myanmar is a country where, yeah, there are around like 350 species of bamboo uh, in the country. And you get all forms of like shapes, colors, and sizes. And uh, we also have like the very commonly used species that are used in most countries like Gigantus, Asper. We also have bamboo Zatulda Ruxbo, which is the main species that is used also in Hong Kong for scaffolding. Uh, but there are so many other species that are still like on the markets and um, what was interesting for us when we started this project in low-cost housing was to look at the availability of, of resources on the market, not just from like an, an abundance point of view, 
but also from a price range point of view. Mm -hmm. And uh, these tiny diameter bamboo species are almost like free on the market because they're used like for fencing and, sca and, 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 and creating brooms and stuff like that. They're, not, they're, they're never used in, in, in construction. So we thought it was a really interesting way to, to start this project. And uh, instead of uh, coming up with some crazy design ideas, looking at the availability of local resources on the market and then utilizing this for like the starting point of the design phase. Um, and, and how do you get that you tiny get bamboo? That is, tiny is it bamboo? like, is it do they like, have plantation or is it really is it locally? Really locally every, every garden has, garden some, has some bamboos? Some bamboos or or so we have like, so do you get it? Do you get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we actually just like cruise around on the highway and find like suppliers that uh, have like shops. Cool. They cool. directly <laughs> harvest them in the forest that's right, right nearby. Um, so when we ever we have like an order and we have like a project that's coming up and we have to order like thousands of bamboo at a time, then we just go to see him and we're like, can you give it to us in the, in the next week? And then he calls up his, his friends who are on the mountains and then just start cutting. So it's all done like in the same like tiny region where we're settled, where we have the bamboo treatment center. Uh, so in terms of logistics, it's very easy because it's just like extremely convenient. And when we talk about awesome. like small diameter bamboo like structures, we're looking at bundles, obviously. Mm. And we have are, are talking in like a, a step further and not only looking at bundles of bamboo, but like the interweaving of the bundles together into a sequence that is specifically designed according to the special joint wherever it is located within the house, whether it's like a joint that crosses between the wood frame, the 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 floor beam and the and the column, for example, or the bracing and the and the and the floor beam, all these different joints will have different sequences to respond to different like uh, loads that are applied upon upon it. So we can like uh, develop the the structure at a very micro level, uh, almost like tectonic level, looking at these tiny joints interweaving sequences. Um, and this took like a, a, a quite a long time to actually. Uh, come about this type of like really radical different way of thinking about bamboo construction mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and we went through like a long process of research here you can see like the final design building the the the, the structural frame prefabricated uh, structural frame upon uh, this um, metal frame to to give every single frame the exactly the right shape we want to give it uh, so we can like uh, optimize the construction process um, and, and have a high quality product at the end. And we also innovated in different ways of strapping the bundles together. You can see our early stage warehouse prefabrication warehouse. Cool. Um, cool. And we went through a sequence of like prototypes. This was a very important. I can talk a bit more about later about like um, the engineering, uh, the, the, the difficulty it is to like go about the structural calculations of tiny bamboo bundled structures uh, because of yep. like the yep. inconsistency that all these different poles have from one to the other, whether it's like the shape they have, the sizes they have, even though it's the same species, they don't all have that same perfect dimension. And so mm -hmm. when we're mm -hmm. bundling bamboo together, it's really hard to kind of like understand exactly how that beam is going to behave because all that bamboo is completely different. It's very iso non-isomorphic material. The, the geometry is very complex. And... Um, and when what we about bundle the all these different what about ones the treatment? So we go about like we've tried to innovate in like new like ecological way of treating bamboo using neem oil, which is a, a natural mm, I like, like, I like material that has like these properties, uh, and, and anti insecticides properties to the material. It's used like very traditionally locally uh, to like uh, as a natural like insect repellent. And we tried mm. treating the bamboo mm. using it. Um, it was effective, but not to the degree where we would feel confident of putting people inside the, these types of houses. Mm -hmm. So we felt that uh, we would need to push the research much more in neem oil treatments uh, before actually like building with it. So we went back to like the most like standard way with borax acid and, and borax, which is like the standard way of um, uh, of, of treating, treating bamboo, bamboo, which is guaranteed. Bamboo. Uh, yep. But it yep. was worth looking into like alternatives, and we're very mm -hmm. happy to do so. But uh, we would need much more time and funding to be able to bring this to like a level where we feel confident in building with it. Um, so in this picture, you can see a couple of tests that we've done in 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 designing different structures and trying to come up with a design that actually works uh, mm -hmm. for building an entire house out out of this tiny bamboo, 
which you can literally take between your knees and crack it, by the way. Like, that's how fragile <laughs> wow. that species is. Wow. So building wow. an entire house that we can guarantee the structure uh, for, for local housing projects, I really wanted to make it sure that it worked. Uh, mm -hmm. And here you can see the final like prototype, which was the most effective. And, um, uh, and then this is one of our first construction where we had like our workers and, and uh, sleeping. So this was the actual first like fully built bamboo, bamboo house where actually people were living inside. Um, wow. wow! Looks amazing! Looks amazing! <laughs> we've done some actual tests. We didn't actually did the structural uh, calculations of the structure. Uh, we actually tested it real time. So we actually applied a lot of loads. You can see all the bricks. This was two tons of loads that we've put on twelve square meters, mm -hmm. and then we were pulling with a truck, and we had a dynamometer to calculate the force that we were pulling the truck and try to imitate the wind load. So pulling on the side, try to see how much that that house can resist the wind load. And trying to pull so strong that it would imitate maybe a hurricane um, and see if we were hurricane proof. And actually, oh, it, oh. It, it was very successful. We were able to pull on to like 150 kilos, 180 kilos on the long side, and 150 on the short side. And since we've improved a lot the, the design of the structure, so now we, we're absolutely guaranteed that this house can withstand uh, strong storms, uh, which is very, very good like to hear. Also more, also more flexible than, than classic, classic material like, material like, like metal exactly. beams, or, beams or, or, or wood, which would crack, would right? This crack, won't crack, right? this or maybe crack, just maybe one crack and, 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 and the other uh, won't, or, uh, won't, or what's the... Yes, what's and it's, the... yeah. And even if you compare it to like larger scale, larger diameter uh, bamboo species like constructions, uh, it's this kind of like construction is more resilient to damage. If there is a crack, it's not like going to jeopardize uh, as much the, 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 the structure and mm -hmm. it does have that it's much more loose in a way so it will move a bit with the wind but it mm -hmm. won't actually like completely fail uh, structurally speaking and even when like there's like a fun fact when when this entire house because we actually pulled it until demolition when it completely fell then we actually were able to just like pull it back and it just came like went back to its original wow. shape. Wow. We had like three or four workers and we just pulled on it all the way back and it just went back to its original shape. So it kind of like wow. deformed wow. and fell, but we can just like put it back the way it was. Um, Almost to like just origami. show how Almost flexible. Like yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And cool. now we're well, looking amazing. at like more amazing. larger scale structures using this mm -hmm. uh, technology of bundled bamboo structures. And now we have this project in Madagascar uh, where we're building uh, a 500 square meter uh, construction using bundled bamboo structure. And, and this time we're actually wow. going wow. into the structural calculations. So you can see that the entire structure has no other uh, species other than this tiny, uh, tiny bamboo. And we think wow. that this is the, the potential that this technology low, low tech has in the construction field of not only designing small pavilion sized construction, but also going larger scale. Um, and this uh, project definitely demonstrates this potential, especially in a place like Madagascar, where you have hurricanes uh, every <laughs> year and like very strong winds. Uh, and, 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 and you can and, see um, the material first- Material is also locally, locally uh, sourced, in, uh, Madagascar, sourced in, Madagascar, in Madagascar, the same bamboo. The same bamboo. So uh, you have uh, uh, you have bamboo species in Madagascar, of course. Um, you have we found the right species. Unfortunately, they don't have like this kind of like very well established supply chain that would be mm -hmm. needed for this kind of scale of construction. This construction you need twelve thousand of these tiny bamboo, and so the supply chain isn't there, but the species mm -hmm. are. So uh, we thought that this project could be a way to promote bamboo construction in Madagascar, getting farmers also uh, involved in, in maybe thinking about like uh, selling it and, um, and uh, re-evaluating uh, like the price range and this, how, how much this resource really costs in the markets because it mm -hmm. has a cost. Mm -hmm. If you're able to create an entire building out of it, then obviously the price of this material goes up and this mm -hmm. can be a new selling point for the farmer to kind of uh, make more money. Um, but this just is not existent uh, at the moment in Madagascar. And we think that this project will be able to trigger that change within the industry. So for now, we're importing the bamboo from Myanmar, which is absolutely incredible when you think of it, of like yeah. southern countries yeah. helping each other. Myanmar exporting to Madagascar, not evolving, involving the, 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 the great north uh, developed countries. 
but like southern countries learning with what they have and developing capacity and developing different ways of utilizing this resource and then sharing the knowledge with other uh, developing countries so we thought this collaboration was really interesting in this regards but obviously the end goal is also to kind of like uh, get locals also uh, in, in Madagascar also uh, you know uh, learn about bamboo construction and revitalize and then kind of push and trigger uh, to create um, new opportunities for construction utilizing bamboo in Madagascar directly. And that's the, so other, topic, the other topic, which is also, which is also interesting also regarding interesting bamboo regarding perception. Bamboo is, perception. It is it different in Madagascar, in Madagascar to, to Myanmar, Myanmar, or is it the or same? Is it the same? Um, I mean, in Myanmar, it's been... Uh, I haven't seen that many bamboo constructions in Myanmar um, uh, when I, I went to visit there. And there are there were some tendencies to, to try to uh, push for bamboo construction. But these companies are, are rather new. Uh, mm-hmm. Where we're building mm-hmm. is in Tamatav, so in northeast of, of Tana, of Tana Nariv. And in this region, there are some plantations, there are natural bamboo growing, but it, it, it's not like fully utilized to the extent that we can see it in Myanmar, for example, where uh, there's a very long history of utilizing. In Madagascar, when you go there, sometimes you can see some small shading using bamboo. You can see some small details in the construction, like roofing using bamboo. But there isn't this like uh, history and culture of like fully utilizing it to its full potential in construction. Uh, the, the deeper you go into the countryside, the more you can see bamboo being l- utilized, but definitely mm-hmm. not to the full mm-hmm. extent that you can see in Myanmar. So it okay, is a rather kind of that's new industry that's emerging. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And there are some interesting like initiatives that are pushing for it. Uh, there are the first like bamboo actual fully built bamboo treatment center uh, in Tamatav that was built about mm. 12 years ago that also utilizes boric acid and borax. There are other treatment centers in Madagascar, but I'm talking specifically for Tamatav. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And we, we will be collaborating with them. Um, but then like because, you know, not this entire industry is very developed then yeah. they yeah. treat the bamboo mostly for export and not for local consumption. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the prices yet, are actually like yet. very like Eurocentric prices, uh, mm-hmm. which sometimes are unaffordable for like local projects. So sometimes it even makes more sense to ship bamboo to that place uh, from a price point of view rather than actually treating them locally. So Crazy. anyways, Crazy. these are all yeah. projects that yeah. like kind of like are pushing the industry and trying to trigger a change and trigger an interest for the material, which long term um, might actually uh, be beneficial. Um, yeah, for everybody. And for everybody. regarding your and clients, regarding we're, your talking clients about, we're talking um, about NGOs. Them NGOs. And uh, yeah, I, so, I assume you have I other clients have other too, clients or, clients too or, or mostly NGOs mostly right now. NGOs right now. So in Myanmar, we're mostly working. It's a B two NGO. We're a private company. Housing now was uh, is a locally like. Um, uh, registered a company in Myanmar that specializes in low-cost housing. Being a, a private company actually has its benefits in Myanmar. Uh, with today's political situation, it's very difficult for NGOs to operate in certain regions. Uh, there was a cyclone that recently, uh, the Mocha cyclone that recent, uh, recently destroyed uh, part of the northern part of Rakhine at the border with Bangladesh. Um, and the emergency response response there was very difficult for NGOs because there was a military blockade that were like trying to heavily stop NGOs from going there and then um, having emergency response locally. And so being a private company allows us to kind of navigate a bit more freely within this uh, situation and and respond a bit more freely to the situation. Um, And so I thought it was more interesting interesting for us to collaborate with NGOs while still having this flexibility within our, 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 our operation um, uh, operations. And so right now we're a B2NGO type of business in Myanmar where we're selling at the lowest possible cost uh, bamboo emergency housing solutions to refugee camps and also in slums. Um, so we've been uh, working with NGOs such as Sauna International, which is a charity from Austria that does mostly education. So we've been building uh, educational program like housing like for example in refugee camps uh, dormitories or um, uh, uh, orphanages for uh, communities that were uh, that had to 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 run away because of the violence happening in the countryside and uh, had to find other ways to continue their education program 
and um, and so we worked with the Sound International with Medical Action Myanmar, who are an incredible NGO supplying medical aid to um, uh, informal settlements uh, throughout the country. Um, and obviously, housing also has health benefits. Being in a healthy house, also uh, not sleeping in the streets, has absolutely, health benefits. Absolutely. So actually, housing is able to kind of like filter into all these different programs that not necessarily like focus so much on housing, mm -hmm. but we're able to kind of graft ourselves into these kind of programs. Um, and in Madagascar, we were actually working with another private company. It has nothing to do with um, the type of like programs we we have in in, in Myanmar. It's a company that's called Bound, the uh, spelled B O N D Y. That's specializing in reforestation, though they're trying to plant a French million people, trees. French people. Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, no, Some. it's actually half Swiss and half uh, from uh, local Mal 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 Malgashi. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I met they're them. trying to I met build. Them. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, they're great, yeah. and they're trying to actually plant like entire forests of Dendrochalamus uh, gigantus. So they're wow. also wow. recently getting into the bamboo industry, which is very exciting for a place like Madagascar, and they're trying to repopulate the forest in Madagascar. Um, and There's they thought a lot of that, work uh, there, right? Work there, right? Mm, not a lot of... Yeah, lot of, uh, deforestation uh, is, 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 is a major uh, problem. Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they thought it was uh, very interesting to kind of build their own like workshops and facilities using bamboo, uh, staying the theme of what they're doing uh, in, on, on their like tree nurseries and stuff like that. Yeah. No, they're, uh, no they're, I think they're, uh, they're, I think doing, they're, amazing they're doing amazing job. Amazing I mean, job. they started like started three years, like just, two ago, years right? just ago, right? Yeah, like three or four years ago, something like that. Yeah, yeah they're quite yeah, recent. Yeah. And every cool. year they're, cool. they're planting exponentially more and more trees. So it's very satisfying to see how fast they're growing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And this, and this um, thing uh, you're, you're thing building you're, now looks really amazing. I mean... Oh, sorry. It cuts a bit. We're losing the we're sound losing again. sound again. No, it's okay. It's It's back. Yeah. Okay, and we're back. Yeah. Okay, we're good. Yeah. 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 And what yeah, are and like future projects you're you're, you're, you're um, focusing on for the on next, for the um, next um, few months or few years, months or years ahead? ahead? Yeah. So this construction will actually start uh, next April 2024. Uh, so that's our next like major kind of like construction going on. We're working with uh, Esteban Morales, which is who is a, a very incredible bamboo engineer from uh, Colombia. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And he's helping us with the actual calculations of this cool. incredible cool. Uh, design, which is very wow. difficult to calculate wow. tiny, tiny bundled bamboo structures for like large scale constructions. Um, what will the roof be? Will it be a tin roof? Be a tin or roof or what are you, uh, what are you uh, calculating for calculating the for the, for weight, the, of for the, the weight of the roof? Yeah, so we're going with a very light roof. Uh, we don't want to. Uh, so uh, the, the budget is quite small for this construction. Uh, so we're trying to be like cost effective and be an extremely light uh, and flexible structure. So we're going with a type of like tarpauling, um, which is a kind of a flexible material that's extremely light, weather resistant, long term. It, it has like it can it can stay it has a guarantee over more than ten years. Um, so it's not okay. as like ecological okay. as bamboo, but it will be incredibly waterproof, long long lasting, and extremely light. So it has different types of benefits. Um, and yeah, uh, so we're going with like a kind of like tarpauling material. It's like a foil. It's like a foil. It's uh, usually used for like, uh, lightweight constructions, like outdoor constructions. It's even also used like for covering up like, uh, logistics, like, uh, trucks, uh, when, the... so it has different utilizations. Um, okay, okay. Because yeah, I mean, the roof is like the roof super key like in any bamboo construction. Any right? We're back here. We had some issues with the internet, probably on my side. <laughs> okay, we were talking <laughs> about the roofs. Um, so the roof um, situation is always key for any bamboo construction, as uh, for sure Raphael can uh, confirm. And uh, locally, yeah. you're having you have like um, what's for the temporary uh, construction? What roofs are you using? Probably like the most cost-effective ones, right? Yeah, it really depends on the project. And actually, you never really see like fully 100% bamboo roofs. It's very uh, rare yeah. to see. Usually when we use even like bamboo shingles and most like buildings that we can see uh, on the internet, uh, there are like several layers of shingles, maybe two layers. And then between the mm -hmm. layers, which we you don't actually see is the waterproofing. So it's very rare. Maybe to we see, have to like... explain what the bamboo shingle is for people who don't know. 
So yeah. they're like you cut bamboo pieces like 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 what like this or bigger or something like yeah, this maybe. On the stitches. Uh, but okay. usually you <laughs> want to use like larger scale diameter bamboo stitches, and then you cut them and then you unroll them. So it goes from a circle to like a mm -hmm. flat plane. And then mm -hmm. this kind of flat plane, you can use it for more like different parts of the houses. You can use it for like the, the flooring material, for the walling in some cases. But you need thousands and, and thousands roofing. of pieces, right, of that. So it's a lot of work. Yeah, it is, a lot of work. it is a lot of work. And, and it's, a, it's also kind of skilled work in the way that you have to cut the bamboo to make it like kind of flat. Uh, so you need to have some sort of uh, skills to make these shingles. And when you talk about roofing as well, uh, then you, you have to utilize non-bamboo elements for roofing, like waterproofing elements, which are non obviously not as ecological as bamboo, which is are obviously always very hidden uh, in so the structure plain that side. you don't actually you usually see. Yeah, um, but you're so showing them like in, in, in some of your construction, yeah. you're now really exposing the like less show and more functionality, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we completely yes. removed the aesthetic part of the roofing um, mm -hmm. And then just keep the waterproofing material there, which is mm -hmm. uh, good for uh, reducing the cost, the labor work, uh, the time to construction, the weight of the structure, and the price. Mm -hmm. uh, so it has some benefits, but then it doesn't look like the ordinary, picturesque, uh, Instagrammable like kind of structures that you see like fully bamboo built. So it has yeah. a bit more of, of a design feel to it and a less of a, like traditional, uh, quote unquote, the kind of a feel to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it has. So depending on the project, you can. Kind of um, when mm -hmm. we talk about, for example, going back to low cost housing in Myanmar, uh, mm -hmm. we usually use like more conventional in this, in, in a sense, kind of a roofing. We use corrugated steel roofing sheets, which is good pretty for cheap, right? Kind of... Six meters, it, it... what is it, eight dollars or six dollars for the long one? Yeah, I mean, in Myanmar, it, it's it's we're going through a, a crazy inflation at the moment, and the prices of construction material have tripled in the past two years. Wow. Um, so that's also something when we have to consider is inflation in our design. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you consider like a crazy crumbling economy when you deal with uh, low cost housing in a in a country like Myanmar? And yeah. when we look at like roofing, for example, corrugated steel roofs are good for many different purposes because you can recycle them like recycled in a sense where you can use them from previous constructions to new. It's modular. Ones. Yeah. And it's modular. And what's good with it yeah. is that you don't need to have a crazy slope. Instead of having that crazy like 30, 35% slope, we're using more traditional techniques. You can have a 4% slope using corrugated mm. steel roofing sheets. So then What you can about the leaves? It. If you have 4% slope and you have bamboo leaves on it, it could start um, like uh, the... Um, yeah, um, with a thatched roof, you need like a 40% roofing wow. slope. Okay, so, so that's why the, the houses that, are like this more. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it doesn't become as cost effective because then you have a yeah. lot more material that you have to put into the roofing structure. Mm -hmm. um, and if you only have a 4% slope, it's almost flat. And there's mm -hmm. uh, you, you just use the stool and then it's more effective also in terms of like water collection, which is something mm -hmm. that's very important when we deal with that kind of communities of uh, yeah. gathering the water from the rain so you can use it for showering, for uh, different things, utilities within the house. So having do also you, materials that are water effective so, in that way are important. So you gather the water in, in like the, the channels and then in water tanks, probably plastic water tanks or whatever is available there, which is uh, exactly. always also very key. If you want to have a house, you need you need water. It's like Yeah, exactly. And you don't yeah. have plumbing system in these uh, parts of town uh, of the mm -hmm. country. So collecting water is so important for these communities to continue uh, being non um, independent. And Raphael, um, before you mentioned another part, which is super um, um, like important too, when building something, there is the social aspect, but also the political aspect of the environment, right? So um, I think you're really in a challenging region right now because of um, how things are regarding uh, politics, military and all that. So um, maybe absolutely. you want to reiterate that, what you, you, yeah. you shared before. Yeah, absolutely. When when I mean, it's a completely different mindset of of going about like designing construction when you're in a country where there's a civil war, where there's military checkpoints every like ten meters, um, mm -hmm. and where they're looking at every product that everything. you're importing, exporting. Everything is being mm -hmm. highly looked at. So it's not as like free of an environment where you can you have to spend a lot of time 
looking at like logistics. Logistics is as much part of the design process as any other part of this process in design when we uh, in, in our project. Uh, just to give you an example, um, like we had, we, we were before we were using like normal, more conventional logistics like uh, trucks uh, to ship the prefabricated structural frames to different parts of the country where we have like projects and we would always get arrested because it's like a non-standardized cargo shape uh, type they of would like, arrest uh, you because of the material. Yeah, and we would have to bribe them. We would have to find different ways to get out of it. Sometimes we would have to turn around and go back. And so now we've kind of redesigned our own like um, means of transportation, which was like an entire project of its own. And we innovated in a whole new way of transporting these structural frames. So instead of like having to to go about like renting trucks, which are actually quite expensive with the raise of the prices of gas uh, due to like the, the the war and then everything going on, the 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 prices of importation are, are getting higher and higher. So the prices of transportation are getting higher and higher. So it was really important to actually have complete control over the logistics and do it entirely ourselves rather than having contractors for that. And we've designed our own custom designed low bed trailer. Um, wow. that we were able to pull with our own truck, which allows us to navigate freely, much more freely in the countryside, uh, dealing with low-hanging electric cables that are often there mm -hmm. and present in, in the countryside, yeah. which is, it sounds as simple as a problem, but to find a solution is actually <laughs> quite complex because we're actually yeah. importing the structural frames that are quite tall. And, there are and it's modular. Cables. So your frames are modular. You have like let's say 20 50 models and and you prefabricate them and just just bring them on site and there you uh connect everything together yeah it's a system of interlocking structural frames so the prefabricated so it's very important to be able to actually access these very remote places and if you have a very bumpy road because the road has not been built because you have low hanging cables then you need to transport these tall elements then having uh, as much flexibility in terms of transportation was definitely something that we considered. And we spent a lot of time designing um, in, 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 uh, in, in order to actually fully implement this project in remote parts of, of the country. Um, so these are all like kind of like aspects and parts of the context which have a tremendous effect on the final design of the house that we're trying to build, which is not necessarily something that you have to consider when you're living in a country which don't have these like social constraints and political like kind of like context so it's kind of like a holistic kind of approach uh which is always kind of complicated but i i kind of love this kind of a complexity and micro incremental like upgrades that you can make every single time you build a house you kind of perfect something different and you make something more easy to build or more smooth or um cheaper um and so th this is kind of like a really long kind of process it took us it's we started this project three years ago so for the past three years we've been kind of incrementally upgrading every single detail of the construction of these houses and we're still going through that process so it, it's, it's fascinating how deep you can go into uh, uh these micro details you know not just from like a construction point of view but logistics harvesting treatments like it can go it can go as far as you want it to go and and right, I'm correct. You didn't start with bamboo architecture. You started with general architecture back in in time, and now you're basically focusing quite on bamboo. Yeah. It's kind of like a wormhole. When you get sucked into it, then it's very hard to get out of it. Uh, <laughs> so I wasn't really like introduced to the field, to the construction that was bamboo when I was working in Japan. It was very commercial work, standardized uh, architecture work that you can find in a lot of different. Uh, uh, companies and then when I arrived in Myanmar that's the first thing that really kind of struck me is like okay bamboo is like extremely present in the country and then I met my my uh, very good friend and now associate uh, 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 Kozin with whom I've been working with for the past seven years and now I'm like completely every project we do it, it's um, we, 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 we always push for bamboo it's funny because actually like right now in the region where we are in Southeast Asia uh, mm -hmm. it's very harvested kind of like industry all the different countries are like kind of pushing for bamboo. If you go to Vietnam, you go to Indonesia, you go yeah. to the Philippines, uh, in, in Thailand, you have all these companies in, in India. Um, they're all trying to promote and, and push for bamboo. And then mm -hmm. they're, they're all influencing each other. It, it's funny because when we get like uh, clients who come up to the office and asking us to design for them, 
uh, bamboo structures, the first thing I always ask them is like, can you please give us some references of ideas you have? And they always pull out the classical Instagrammable, like beautiful buildings that you can find uh, in Indonesia and Bali and stuff like that. And and then I always respond like, okay, this is good for Indonesia, but like in Myanmar, you know, we're not, we, it's a different context. Like maybe we can do something that's much more like specific to, to Myanmar, like, you know. And unique, uh, so unique and, to and the, you need, yeah. You don't need to yeah. like, uh, copy like obviously whatever people are doing yeah. uh, we can yeah. learn from it but we don't need to copy it we can find our own like specific local style uh, mm -hmm. getting finding inspiration from like vernacular architecture from the way that people have been utilizing specifically in that specific region bamboo for like centuries uh, and yeah. then and it gives more it. value then too value to the region value to the people value to the uh, structure at the end because yeah but uh, inspiration is important, though. I think the whole Bali bamboo thing at the end is, is positive. But yeah, sometimes people just want to know one thing and, and, and it's like the only thing they know, though. They, they're not, not everybody's really open minded at the beginning, right? <laughs> but it's incredible the work they're doing. They're really pushing like the industry to a whole new level that has never yeah. been obtained before. So the work they're doing is incredible, not only from a like engineering point of view, but also from like a, I want to say soft power point of view. It's yeah. funny that even yeah. in, in deep Myanmar locations, people are still showing me these houses and saying, we want this. And it's like, damn, yeah. I mean, you guys have really influenced the market like crazy, which is great, uh, but it's not the same context. So I'm trying to push for alternative designs, alternative ways of thinking of utilizing the materials and then creating other types of opportunities using like, uh, different species that are available specifically in Myanmar, for example. Um, and it's interesting because your your uh, technique now is this tiny bamboo. Um, I've seen it before, but in our artistic um, setups, not in really practical housing project, which is kind of um, um, interesting because, I mean, from an artistic point of view, it seems like there is the acceptance, but from the practical housing, there wasn't. And now that you've been doing it, obviously the acceptance is here because I mean, uh, it's super cheap, it's super fast, and it's it's also resilient because as you said before, it, it can withstand a tornado, right? And uh, it, it can fold back. <laughs> so, I mean, this is amazing, magical. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there, there's been applications that I've seen before. If you look at CLC and Chamai, Chamai Life Constructions, I've seen some smaller, like, uh, um, uh, elements that were built with bundles. I've seen also some bundles utilized in, in Portugal, actually, Canya Viva. They're not actually using bamboo, they're using cane, but they're also using mm -hmm. different types yeah. of like strapping tools and, and stuff like that. They're really pushing for it. But there haven't been like already like people really promoting and then like publishing exactly. their findings. Yeah. So we've oh. already published a couple like um, of, uh, of papers uh, in, in different conferences to really kind of like uh, Push that. Uh, the, 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 the findings that we've had, um, and then kind of like or uh, publish freely uh, what we're doing, so that other people can maybe build upon it. Uh, I think this is also very important. Um, yep. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're yeah. back. We had a slight uh, delay. I was like, <laughs> not again. No worries. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, now we're, we're now we're gone again. Okay. So, uh, I the video is gone. I hope you hear me. Um, yes. Uh, any closing words <laughs> from your side, Rafael? Maybe. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a very kind of a, it's an incredible moment to be working in this field because uh, it's it's a field that's it, it's been here for centuries, uh, but right now it's in this incredible transition of going from a traditional construction technique to a highly engineered one. And to be able to surf this wave as it's transitioning uh, is, is really incredible. And um, I, I've been doing some workshops in, um, in, in Germany. Uh, we took part also, this is where we've met at the first European Bamboo Expo. And so there is also kind of like this diffusion of knowledge that is becoming global and worldwide. And, and to see it come from the global south and getting pushed into mm -hmm. the northern countries is absolutely phenomenal of uh, yeah a, a low tech a, a technology that's um, that 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 has this history and that we're able to kind of modernize and 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 apply different um, 
design tools and engineering thinking to it and, and bring it to the next level and being part of this transition, like I said, is, is just absolutely incredible. And every company and every project is doing something a little bit new and challenging everything that has been done in the past so we can all have our own like personalized inputs within this transition and bring something new to the table. So it's it's very kind of like a breath of fresh air in this in the in the, in the field of architecture and design to see a lot something of innovation. new that is just like just happening at this at this time. Mm -hmm. Fantastic! All right. So um, I thank you a lot for for uh, all the information you shared today here, Rafael. Um, it's really refreshing to see what you're doing there and how you're doing it and um, your background and what's what's coming now uh, in in Madagascar. Um, and uh, we keep talking. Um, great Absolutely. having you on Thank the Think so Bamboo much. podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to uh, wherever and uh, like and comment. Thank you a lot. Absolutely. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.